It doesn't seem complicated. I am the Inquisitor. Welcome. Since their introduction in Star Wars Rebels, the Inquisitors have been a fascinating new addition to Star Wars canon. I like a lot about Star Wars, but my favorite thing has always been the lightsaber fights, so introducing a new enemy that could rival a Jedi and fight them in a duel was something that I loved to see and I was really happy to see introduced. But if you are not as familiar with the books, TV shows, or comics, then you might be wondering, who are the Inquisitors? Where did they come from? Why were they not in episode 4? And things of this nature. So I think especially with the Obi-Wan series releasing, they're going to become much more mainstream knowledge. So I think people are going to start knowing about their existence, and I want to give you a good foundation and a base understanding of who these guys are. Inquisitors are dark side users sent by the Empire to hunt Jedi, often using their twin-bladed spinning lightsaber. The concept for them started long before the events of Rebels and even before the Empire even existed. Darth Sidious, aka Palpatine, had Order 66 meticulously planned out. However, he'd spent years as a senator and learned as much about the Jedi and how they operated as anybody could ever know. He knew that using the clones to turn on the Jedi in a war that he instigated would take out the good majority of the Jedi, as most of the Jedi were already fighting in the war alongside the clones or on one of the core worlds which also had a heavy clone presence at this time. But he also knew that there were many Jedi out in the expanse of the universe helping people of the Republic and giving hope to the galaxy with no clone trooper presidents on these outer worlds. These Jedi were in no danger at all really. Palpatine's plan was to ambush them on their way back to Coruscant, but alas, Obi-Wan Kenobi foiled that plan and was able to get a message out into the galaxy warning any remaining Jedi, stay away, go to hiding, it's not safe on Coruscant, the order has fallen. Palpatine, being the over-planner he was, worked on a backup plan though. For any Jedi in the galaxy that had not been killed, he would create an army of Force users that could use the dark side and go hunt down these Jedi. We got the first glimpse of this plan in the Clone Wars animated series, Season 2, Episode 3, titled Children of the Force, in which Cad Bane was tasked with stealing Force-sensitive babies and returning them to Palpatine's torture conditioning facility. Anakin and Ahsoka were able to foil this plot, however, Palpatine was also able to adapt and change tactics. He decided to keep a close eye on all of the current Jedi, former Padawans all the way up to Masters, that had many disagreements with the Jedi Council, and had a difficult time adjusting to the life of a Jedi. Once Order 66 was executed, he went to those Jedi and offered them a chance to not die and join him to hunt down any Jedi that escaped this initial purge. He would offer them everything they wanted and freedom to explore the world in a way they saw fit. Of course, this was just rhetoric from Palpatine whispering sweet nothings into their ear because he sent them to this training facility where they would be converted to the dark side using many different methods. Some were tortured and some turned willingly, but all would eventually suffer in order to fuel their hatred and keep them on the path of evil. This is what became known as the Inquisitorious Program, or the people themselves known as Imperial Inquisitors. Pretty soon after Palpatine had recruited these Inquisitors, Darth Vader found out and quickly took over the program himself. He was really brutal to them and cut off limbs during training just to spite them really, though he did claim it was to edge them away from the Jedi teachings of a defensive combat and move towards an offensive combat style. This in turn made them overly aggressive fighters, and actually they were probably even worse in combat now than they had been before. This is because not only did they favor the offensive style of fighting, but really they put aside defense altogether. They could often overwhelm their targets with aggression, which would win them battles frequently, especially against former Padawans, but in a one-on-one -on -one fight with a fully trained Jedi, this technique really did not fare so well. I should note too that while these were Jedi that Palpatine believed he could turn to the dark side, he was careful never to pick anyone that could one day rival his own power and threaten his rule. He didn't see them as anything more than tools and they weren't capable of being Sith. 
They could use some dark side powers, and though Vader taught them a few Sith techniques, many of the more powerful techniques were kept secret from them. But because of the way the Inquisitors were trained to be aggressive and show no compassion to anything, they would often betray each other, and with any chance they could find to elevate their own status, they would take it. I will reclaim it. Wait. Let him thin them out. Then we will retrieve Lord Vader's prize. Which also generally kept them at a weaker state than a Sith Lord could ever be. The most powerful one was likely the Grand Inquisitor. He was a former Jedi Temple guard who turned to the dark side after being promised to be able to explore the previously off-limits Jedi archives. The other Inquisitors we know are the 3rd, 5th, 6th, 8th, and 10th brother, and the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 7th, and 9th sister. When they arrived to the training facility, they were stripped of their identities and given numbers instead. To my knowledge, the number designator for each of them doesn't really have anything to do with rank and seems almost as if they were numbered just as they walked through the door. As there is a 10th brother, it would be safe to assume that there may have once been 10 brothers, 10 sisters, and one Grand Inquisitor for a total of 21 Inquisitors. We don't know that for sure, but we do know that there were no more Inquisitors by the time A New Hope came out, and they were likely all killed. In fact, judging by how Vader treated them during their time in training, I think it would make sense that a few of them died even during this training process, either by Vader or having a duel with one of the other Inquisitors, a duel to the death probably, again, facilitated by Vader. I'll likely put out another video on the individual Inquisitors that we know of and the specifics of how they each died as far as the ones we know for sure are dead, but this was just a brief history on the inception of the Inquisitors, where they came from, and how many we know exist right now. But I hope you were able to learn something new. I'm Keegs, and I will catch you all next time for some more Star Wars content.